Hey guys, welcome back. This is Sierra and today I am spending a day at home and it's kind of cold and it's kind of yucky and I don't know how to go anywhere right now. Um, I do have a little bit of makeup on because I have plans later so I figured why not film a at home type video. So in today's video, um, you guys already know because you guys read the description, you guys know that I'm going to be sharing a recipe with you guys. Actually today is the first day of fall of the day I'm filming this. I'm going to be posting it later of course. But it's starting to get cold and the weather is changing and what that means is also the health climate is going to be changing. It means flu season is coming and cold season is coming and a bunch of yucky stuff. And so in today's video I'm going to be sharing an elderberry syrup recipe. Before I go any further I do just want to quickly say that I am not a pediatrician, I am not a family doctor, I'm not a registered nurse. I'm just a person who likes to try to do natural things when I can. If you guys have been watching my channel you guys know I'm into zero waste and I like DIYing so I figured why not DIY? some elderberry syrup, right? Before I moved to Japan, I used to get my elderberry syrup either at the health food store or via Amazon, and I could still order it from Amazon, but actually a friend of mine who just moved away said that she used to make her own elderberry syrup, and she showed me kind of how cheap and how easy it is, so I figured I might as well give it a try for myself. So when I was buying my elderberry syrup, I will put the link to the kind I used to buy in the description. Um, there's a lot of different brands you can buy. I bought this one because it's one of the cheaper ones and it seemed to work. Um, but the elderberry syrup I'm mean, making is from dried elderberries. You're probably going to ask why I bought the elderberries from Amazon when I could have just purchased the elderberry syrup. Um, you can make more syrup as you can buy a pound of elderberries. So anyways, I'm going to show you guys before I start the elderberries that I chose. I chose these elderberries. I don't actually even know the brand. Ah, okay, so the brand is called the Brewer's Best. Uh, I guess they're a company that sells all kinds of stuff for brewing. I don't buy any of their stuff, but this is the package I got. It is, I think it was 16, 8, no, I think it was, yeah, it was 8 ounces. Uh, it says right on the top. And I don't remember how much I paid for this because I bought it um, a few months ago, but I'll find out and I'll put the link to the exact elderberries in the description. Although I will say like there are lots of other elderberries you can buy, so buy whichever ones you want and prefer. When I'm done explaining it, I'm going to kind of show you guys all the steps of the recipe, but I just want to explain it really quickly in case you guys are wondering. Uh, most of the elderberry recipes that you'll find have honey in them, but as you guys know, my family is vegan, so we don't use honey. And in the recipe I found, I used maple syrup, so you could also use agave nectar. Anyways, I made this syrup yesterday, and so I'm going to show you guys the footage in a second, and then after that, I'm going to come back and do a test testing. Yeah? Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to make your elderberry syrup is a pot. I used a two-quart stock pot here, um, but I think you can use any pot that all this is going to fit in. Then you're going to take one cup of elderberries. I used dried here, but you can use two cups of fresh and pour them into your pot. And then you're going to take a few minutes to sift through them and pick out any sticks or any dried leaves because nobody wants those in there. We're making elderberry syrup here, not elderberry stick syrup. Next you're going to add about one teaspoon of grated ginger. Mine looks a little bit weird and goopy here because I used a frozen ginger, but you can use fresh ginger too. Next you're going to add two and a half cups of water and a cinnamon stick. Then give it a really good stir and turn on the heat. After about 5 to 10 minutes, it should come up to a boil, and once it's boiling, you're going to turn the heat down and let it simmer for 45 minutes. After your timer goes off, you're going to turn off the heat and let the elderberries cool for a little while. I waited for, I would say, about an hour or so. If you don't let the elderberries cool long enough, it's going to be difficult for you to squeeze all the liquid out with your hands. Or in my case, I just used the back of the spoon. Once you're finished washing your hands, you're going to take two third cups of whatever sweetener you want to use, in my case maple syrup, and then you're going to add about two tablespoons of lemon juice and of course the elderberry concentrate, and then you're going to give it a really good mix. And now it's done. So all you have to do is pour it into the container of your choice and keep it in the fridge until you need it. Alright, so we're back now, and you guys have seen the footage, so now I'm going to do my little taste test of my elderberry syrup. Um, one thing that I did want to say is that you can vary the spices to your family's needs. A friend of mine puts cloves in hers because she says it has kind of like a numbing agent for the throat if you have a sore throat. I just followed this recipe exactly. But now I'm going to do a little taste test for you guys. And I should be prepared and have a spoon, but I don't. I'm going to grab a spoon from the drawer underneath. Alright, now I have my spoon, so I'm going to talk about dosing for just a second. It depends on who you ask about how much is the correct dosage, but um, 
I honestly just do like a spoonful a day because that's how I do it and I like to mix it with water but I've never had the homemade kind before it may not need to be mixed with water but the kind that I used to buy before does not taste good on its own so anyway this is what my elderberry syrup looks like it's just stored in the mason jar I'm gonna give it a try I think this is a I guess this is technically a tablespoon but it's really shallow so I'm gonna do like half or something so I'm gonna because I used maple syrup, my elderberry syrup is a little bit thinner just because maple syrup is thinner, but I'm sure if you use something like a agave nectar, which is thicker, then it would be a little bit thicker. All right, got, I'm gonna make a huge mess for you guys in my kitchen, but you know, it's cool. Right, I have my water here. I'm gonna mix the syrup into the water. I don't know about that color. All right, and I'm gonna just taste the spoon first. Tastes like elderberries. Okay, I'm gonna now give it a little try. Oh, it's actually really good. I actually think the maple flavor kind of makes it like a little bit extra special, you know what I mean? It's pretty good. Mmm. Okay, so you guys can probably guess uh, my reaction of my review of this recipe. It tastes really good. Um, one mistake I think I did make is I think I boiled it on a little bit of too high heat because I didn't get quite as much elderberry liquid so your flavor might be a little bit different but mine pretty much just tastes like elderberry flavored maple syrup which who doesn't want that it's pretty great and then one thing I noticed is that these elderberries are actually pretty expensive when you buy them or at least they seem expensive it's still cheaper but I didn't want to just throw them away because my recipe used a whole cup which is about half of my eight ounce pan package so uh, I read online and apparently you can use your leftover berries to make something called elderberry tea. And so what I did is I just boiled the water and like you would for tea and I put the elderberries in it and I let it sit accidentally overnight. My recipe that I use, I'll put that in the description below as well, said to leave it for 15 minutes. I got distracted. So whoops, I don't know, but I'm going to give it a little taste test. These are the same bottles I usually use for my kombucha. I put about, I think, three tablespoons of sugar in here. It's a 32 ounce bottle, I think. Might as well try it since we're here. Same glass. Mm. Smells like boiling elderberries. All right, let's see. Mmm, that's actually pretty good. I really like it. I think I might be on to something. So I guess another thing too, if you have kids, if you can't get your kids to drink elderberry syrup, even if you mix it with water, you could try making elderberry tea. Um, and it's just kind of like a fruity tea that's really healthy for them. So again, I'm not a physician or a registered nurse or a child dietitian, so I can't tell you how much to give them um, as far as dosage, but do your own research, see what you think. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm gonna finish this, it's pretty good. Mmm. Not that I'm like looking forward to getting sick or whatever or looking forward to flu season, but if I keep making this homemade elderberry syrup, it probably won't be nearly as bad as it has been in the past because at least I don't have to make this twice every time I take a sip of it. So anyways, you guys, that's the end of the video. I don't have anything else to say. My neighbors continue to tap, so I'm going to close for now. But if you guys like this video, please make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.